mycorrhizal. So plants that are mycorrhizal are ones that support the, 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 uh, the VAM or the, or the my, mycorrhizal fungi. So how that works is the, the VAM uh, in this package uh, contains spores of uh, seven or eight glomus spe species, uh, the main one being uh, glomus erevices. Now these are very resistant spore found in soils and when the plant grows and puts out roots it sends out a chemical signal that causes the spores to germinate then that uh, mycelia uh, which is a, a very fine microscopic thread attaches itself to the plant roots so it essentially it colonizes the plant roots so it also protects the plant roots against other infections or other fungi that are infective or pathogenic because of problem. Okay, these are beneficial in the fact that they protect the root system from other pathogens, which are fungi or bacteria and even nematodes. They're, they really they trap it. It's a, it's a, it's a, a filamentous mycelia around the root actually traps and consumes nematodes. Okay. Now what it also does is it produces chemical compounds that help release phosphate so that the plant can uptake phosphate, grow better. Then the plant produces excess sugars, which it secretes through the root system and that stimulates, that feeds the mycorrhizal fungi and they, and they can expand. And the fungi grows with the root. So we just put some on the seed or on the start or in the potting mix and uh, it'll germinate when there's roots there to germinate on and it spreads with the root. Okay, and then eventually uh, it produces its own spores. So the plant, at, you know, at the end of the growing season, at a certain period of time, the mycorrhizal fungi, which is, looks like just fuzzy white, mycelia on the roots starts producing spores and releasing spores and the spores are like little brown like footballs and so this this uh reproduces itself by producing spores every year so so if you use this in a garden or soil on your garden plants basically you know you're producing more spores you're inoculating it, it perpetuates it over time by creating more spores and in nature those spores have moved from forests to fields a lot of times by squirrels ground squirrels burrowing uh, animals let's say uh, various means that, that it's moved around but in most cases uh, it, it's not present so this is why we use you know inoculant now in hydroponics and greenhouses obviously not there unless you add it and so you add the mycelia the spores and the spores germinate and goes from there they produce little vesicles a little packet on the root that contains water and you can see this almost with the naked eye you definitely see it with a microscope so the, the, this particular fungi actually produces look like little plastic sacs like tiny plastic sacs that store water so when the plant if there's a drought or something and there's a lack of moisture the plant can draw on that stored moisture from the vesicles that were produced by the mycorrhizal fungi and then of course so the mycorrhizal fungi benefits from that that's what symbiosis is that's for both uh, both organisms benefit from their association. Very important thing. Uh, not only does the VAM fungus produce substances that release phosphate and nutrients from the soil, uh, it also, like I say, it, it helps store water and it actually produces humic substances. 
the mycorrhizal fungi himself, you know, in their activity, their metabolism, and, and the byproducts they produce actually are healing substances. So the VAM fungi itself is a soil improvement effect uh, and may be responsible in nature for a lot of the formation of humus, organic matter, human acids, human substances in the soil. So this is prepared in, from pure culture spores that are, that are grown on plants specifically and not, not in liquid artificial culture and then they're harvested and concentrated and then we, we list we list which ones they are uh, on our labels guaranteed analysis and how many propagules uh, per gram okay and, and no trichoderma species no I mean when they say there's trichoderma in there that's a, because they were growing it in a like a culture media not live plants. And trichoderma is a common contaminant. It's green mold. So it gets into the culture, you know. And so they turn that into a good thing, you know. So, yeah, some brands say, it contains trichoderma, like that's a good thing. No, that's a contaminant. <laughs> right. It's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing in this context. But you're adding trichoderma spores, which are a contaminant, but anyway, I won't get into that. But the point of the matter is, uh, this is a crucial symbiosis between plants and, and fungi. And uh, but not all plants are mycorrhizal. Keep that in mind. For instance, cabbage is not a mycorrhizal plant, but tomatoes are. And so there's a list. You can go online and see which plants are mycorrhizal and which aren't. Okay, so nearly all the plants that we grow in greenhouses and hydroponics including cannabis, are mycorrhizal plants. <clears throat> so, now you have endo and ecto. Uh, so that's not important. This, this product here is, is endo, and so that's for garden plants and greenhouse crops and things like that. The, the ecto is uh, in forest with trees, and like Douglas fir, pines, things like that. Uh, so we're not talking about that in this context. But the, these, there's a lot of research done all over the world on, you know, endomycorrhizal fungi. It's very, very important because it's a very low cost way of increasing yield. We'll increase yield uh, and uh, reduce fertilizer and help build the soil. So that, that's really the story. And we, we mix it in a base of pulverized humic acid. So it's the only one on the market where the base of it, that the spores are in it, is actually a plant biostimulant in itself, a humic acid uh, uh, in the form of composted leonardite, which is dry, fine powder. And then on top of that, we add, uh, uh, we add some uh, the trace elements that these fungi and plants need, like iron, cobalt, and aluminum, and, and some kelp extract. So those are great entourage products, would you say, Bob? Biostimulants that support the cast of characters in your mix? Well, yeah. The idea is feed the soil, feed the plant. You bet. In this case, feed the mycorrhizal fungi. Give them a lunchbox. Feeds the soil and feeds the plant. Yeah. But just like us, they, there are certain things they need. You know, they need, they need humic substances to prime the pump, you might say, and they need specific trace elements to do their functions. And, and there's some that are usually deficient in the soil, like cobalt and aluminum. Uh, so uh, that's what it is. And it became a very popular product. And people ask me, can we use it in hydroponics? There's no soil. And I used to think, no, how can that be? But then over the years, we found out, yes, it does work in hydroponics. Because it's not about soil. It's about symbiosis with the plant roots. And so as far as the VAM fungi is concerned, hey, that's fine. The roots are in a, uh, artificial media, like uh, whatever it is, quar or peat or whatever it is, or even aeroponics. You know, they can still colonize the root system. That's what they're after. The soil's not really important. You know, and if the trace elements and nutrients and humic substances, like our full power, are in the hydroponic media, 
no problem for the van fungi to colonize the root. So, uh, so that, that's, that's the reason why just a lot of greenhouse, indoor farming, hydroponics, or whatever you want to call it, whether it's, it's vegetables or herbs or cannabis, uh, this widely used product that took off without very little uh, marketing on our part. It was just something that worked really well and the word got around. So, but a lot of people, you know, don't really understand what it is. You don't have to tell them that, no, you don't need to, you know, put it on multiple times. You know, it's used when you plant the plant, the seed or whatever, and it's self-perpetuating and it will grow with the root system. It's not like something that gets used up and you have to keep applying it. It's alive. It's, these are living spores with a guaranteed analysis that they're there. And that has been monitored by the states that we are registered in, the state of Oregon we're in today. It's where we produce it. And believe me, and everybody knows it, the state of Oregon is very, uh, let's say, thorough. So, you know, there's been cases last year where uh, they checked every microbial product on the market. Uh, for the contents as stated on the label and I think of, of about 45 or, or more I don't remember the exact number only two products uh, were, were passed by, by Oregon Department of Agriculture as containing what they were claiming so that means all those products are bacteria they tout bacteria or some of them are also uh, claiming mycorrhizal fungi or something else no, <laughs> when you actually check on uh, the state check, not there. And then they, they, they give them a, uh, pull them off the shelf. They, they, so, so of those 48 or so products, uh, two remain on the market. Uh, one is ours. <laughs> uh, so the reason that I promote and I produce this is because it is stable. We can make a claim on the label and, and, and meet that claim and because it's, it's, it's much more stable than bacterial products. It's a fungal spore, very resistant to drying, heat, all kinds of factors. And we have a, a range of mycorrhizal species in here uh, that can tolerate or thrive in different conditions and different soils and different temperatures, regimes, etc. So if one doesn't work, the other will work. So. Oh, well, that's really it. So, yeah. so it's a living soil plant inoculant. And uh, I want to get that straight. It's not like a biostimulant in the traditional, you know, uh, definition, really. Right. I mean, it has like plant biostimulants in it, you know, which are humic substances, and kelp, for instance, just to stimulate the rapid. Uh, effect from the germinating spores. But the spores germinate based on chemical signals that plant that the plant roots put out. Uh, so keep that in mind. It's not going to do anything uh, until there's plant roots there that it can colonize. And then uh, and keep in mind that in the case of cannabis or tomatoes or whatever it is Phosphorus is a very important factor. I don't know if they found out it was the only thing that could correlate with increased THC content was, was actually phosphate. So phosphate's unstable, it tends to tie up. There's a lot of reasons why there's a problem with phosphate. Uh, and the mycorrhizal fungi are, are what's responsible in nature for stimulating uh, the release or better uptake and utilization of phosphate. Very, very important. Uh, and you'll see products on the market that are touted as bacterial products that increase solubilization of phosphate. Well, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe in the test tube. But this, this is what, you know, really does it in nature, you know, and that's pretty well established by science. I don't think there's any controversy on that whatsoever. Um, so, whether it's field crops, hydroponics, gardens, 
oh, this is what you really want to use. I mean, because you get a lot of results for a very small price with this uh, self-perpetuating, non-toxic, safe, natural product. It's the way that, you know, that we need to be going in this world.